Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make some cards and I'm gonna show you a bunch of different ways to use woodless watercolor pencils. Or you can use whatever watercolor crayons or watercolor pencils you have. These are the brand new ones from Altenew and they come in that little container which keeps them from getting jostled around and broken in travel, which I really like. We're gonna start off by stamping with obsidian ink on some watercolor paper. And here I'm stamping it like you normally would, putting it on a block and stamping it on your paper. Now that looks all right, but the image is a little light. so I thought thought I would share another technique I use whenever I'm doing a large background stamp or whenever I have a textured paper, and that is putting the paper on the stamp. It's kind of like an old printmaking technique, and it assures that you're going to get contact with every little detail of that stamp because you're rubbing over the back. And there, even on this textured watercolor paper, I get a really nice crisp black image. And uh, both of them will be usable, but it just depends on the look you're going for. Now the other stamping technique I want to share with you is actually using your watercolor crayons to stamp or watercolor pencils. Now you can do this with a regular watercolor pencil that has wood, but it's not as recommended. Using a watercolor crayon or a woodless watercolor pencil allows you to put down a lot of pigment without getting the without the wood getting in the way. I'm using a couple shades of yellow. I'm going to use some browns and some greens. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to do is get all the colors that I would uh, paint a stamped image with, but putting it directly onto the stamp. Now I spritzed this stamp with water before I began, and that's pretty important because you're gonna need that water to coax the pigment off of the watercolor stick. If you find that your stamp is drying on you, you can dip the pencil in some water and moisten the end of the watercolor pencil, and then you can go ahead and put those colors right directly onto your rubber stamp. The last color that I'm going to add here is a complement, which is purple. Purple is a complement of yellow. It's really exciting to have those colors next to each other, but you want to put those crazy colors on last so they don't make mud. And then you want to press your watercolor paper to the stamp again, just like I showed you in the previous example. And that's going to make sure that everything transfers from the stamp onto the paper. Isn't that pretty? Now you might be able to spray that stamp and get a ghost print for another card too, if you want to give it a try. And uh, you can even do that on regular cardstock. Um, but I definitely like to do this first one on watercolor paper. Now, depending on how much pigment you have, you may just want to use a wet brush and drag some of the color around like I'm doing here. But if you want to have more color, you can use the watercolor pencils to add more color. Now, when I'm doing a project like this, what I like to do is scribble my watercolor pencils onto a palette. And this little dish here has ridges on it. This is actually just a trinket dish from the Dollar Tree. I thought it was so cute and just the perfect size when I need a little ink palette. And so by scribbling the watercolor pencil onto the dish, I can pick it up just like paint off a palette and it works very well. You can see I'm gonna do that with all the colors that I used in this piece and you wanna keep repeating the colors you've already used. I know you have 24 colors there, so it's really tempting to put 24 colors on your project, but limiting it, limiting it to you know five or six will really make the painting look a lot nicer. It'll make the card have a lot more harmony to it and it will look a lot more sophisticated. So try not to grab a new color unless you absolutely have to. If you can mix what you need from what you have, that's always a better idea. And sticking with a more limited palette always looks more chic and pulled together. So keep that in mind as you're creating your cards. When you are painting this, think about the places the sun would hit the petals. That's where you want your lightest yellow, like more of your lemony color. And then areas that are tucked behind, petals that are tucked behind other petals or in close to the center, they're gonna have a darker tone, such as more of an orangey yellow or brownish yellow, or maybe even a little bit of a reddish color then you'll have a lot more depth to your picture and a lot more movement. And you'll be able to see the different layers of the petals a lot more and it will give it a more full and finished look. Of course, you can leave this picture just the way it is, but I like to add a little spatter because I think it makes it look really uh, fresh and lively and hand done. So I'm just using the uh, a big wet juicy paintbrush to pick up some color from the watercolor pencils and just spatter it on. You can also drag a wet brush across the watercolor pencils and flick it on that way. It just depends on the look you're going for. The wetter the paint, the bigger the splashes you're gonna get, so keep that in mind. And if you want really fine splash the splashes, you could scribble it on a palette and use a toothbrush to pick it up. That works really well for that technique. I think this is really pretty, and I hope you'll loosen up a little bit with your painting. And if you get any uh, spatters where you don't want it, all you gotta do is blot it with a tissue or paper towel. Now I want a really artsy look here, so I'm gonna tear the edges. So I just have a uh, straight edge here, 
a ruler would be fine, anything really. And I am just tearing off the straight edges so that I end up with um, uh, kind of a freeform artsy look. Now you can save those pieces you tear off for sentiments later, which I'll show you coming up. But um, I just think it's so pretty to have a nice natural deckled edge. And with watercolor paper, hand tearing works a lot better than trying to use like a deckle edge scissor, which can sometimes snag watercolor papers. Now, another thing I like to do when I'm hand tearing an edge is to add a bit of color to it. You could do that with an ink pad, but since I've got leftover paint on my palette, I figure why not? Let's just pick up some of that leftover paint and go along the edges. We have a lot of orange in our scene, so by adding blue, which is the opposite of orange, it gives it a nice pop and really makes it look fantastic. Make sure you let your watercolor panels dry completely before you go ahead and put them on a card because it can be difficult to adhere down wet paper. So for this technique, we are going to use that second image we stamped where we pressed the paper to the stamp and got that really nice dark crisp image. And what you wanna do is color with your main color like I did with the light yellow, and then go in and add shadow with an orange. And then you're gonna liquefy the color. Now notice how you don't need to cover every single spot because when you add water, your colors get a lot vibrant and they're very easy to manipulate and move around. Then you can use color on your palette. Remember, we just scribbled our, our pencil on our palette. You can use that to add shadow, add subtleties, tweak the color a little bit. It's very versatile, just like you'd use your watercolor paint. Now, since these are pencils, you can get a lot of detail. These come pre-sharpened and it's very easy to color within the lines here and then just add a little water to intensify. If you need to sharpen these pencils, what I recommend is let them dry, sharpen them out, but sharpen them over a palette so you can save the shavings to use as paint later. After I sharpen my pencil, I would just give it a spritz of water and let it sit in my palette and it becomes a pan of paint, which is really handy. I haven't sharpened these though yet. Now, getting a blend is really easy with these. All you have to do is color down your main color like I did with the green, and then you could add that turquoise into your shadow area. And once you go over it with a little bit of water, it becomes a beautiful gradient blend. And it's a lot easier to do than with alcohol markers. So if you've struggled with alcohol markers in the past, but you like that gradient look, give watercolor pencils a try because I bet you'll find them quite a bit easier to use. I'm using the Altenew water brush for my water brush for here, but you could always use a standard brush and a cup of water. There, it makes no difference. It's whatever you prefer and whatever you have on hand. So continue on in this manner and finish coloring your image here. Now I did heat set my ink before I begin painting. It's very important if you're gonna use a pigment or a hybrid ink like the Obsidian Black from Altenew, their hybrid ink, that you let it dry completely or heat set it. That way it's not going to react with the water. If you stamp it and then jump right in with the paints, you do run the risk of smearing it and that's not a pretty look. Now I wanted to have a little bit more liveliness in the background. I thought this looked a little fussy. So what I'm doing is I'm just using a flat paintbrush, just a regular watercolor brush, and I'm just adding swashes of color here and there and just kind of building an interesting, almost patchworky looking background. I think it looks really pretty and um, adds a nice contrast to the detail of the flower stamp. And you can use any color that you've already used in the image. I'm liking the purple and the turquoise because I use those as accent colors rather than like a main color. So I know my yellow flowers are gonna stand out against them. And then a little bit of green doesn't hurt. That looks really nice too. I like this. If you don't like it, you can keep your background plain or one solid color. It's completely up to you because that's what I love so much about stamping and mixed media is that you can make it fit your preferences. And with a stamp, you can stamp it as many times as you like and experiment until you get just the look you're going for. And who doesn't love a card to share? So for this last uh, demo, what I did was I sprayed the paper before coloring. Look at how bright those colors are when you do that. When you have wet paper, the color just leaps right off of the stick as you're coloring. So you can get some really bold colors. In fact, something you could do if you don't mind your supplies not being pristine is you can actually break up off small pieces of the woodless watercolor pencil, sand off the varnish, and use it for really big direct to paper applications. So really the sky's the limits with these products and uh, we really have a lot of fun with them. So I'm also doing some spattering and I love how the colors kind of diffuse on the wet background. Um, so it's kind of like a combination of some of the other techniques that we did earlier. But like I said, experiment, play, and figure out what um, techniques you like the best. I like this one where I just kind of flick the color right off the tip of the pencil. I get some, like almost like a brusho effect here and there where I get the stronger, um, uh, the stronger, 
chunks of color. Now I was experimenting with this set of stamps called Best Sentiments and I have to be honest I struggle with the um, type of stamps that have that are mostly solid that just have really fine lettering in it. Um, I ended up stamping this a few times and heat embossing it um, and I didn't end up using these because I just wasn't completely happy with the results I was getting and I also thought the sentiments that came with the sunflower set looked a little bit better with these cards. So um, I did give it a whirl, but I wasn't that thrilled with that. So if you guys have any tips on how I can get a really good impression with those shadow stamps with really fine sentiments, please let me know in the comments below because it's something I've always struggled with as a stamper. And I bet you guys have an answer for me. So then I went ahead and trimmed down all of my cards, uh, the other two that I didn't tear. And I noticed that these little scraps left over were really pretty. So I thought, you know, I didn't really like the other sentiments that much after I stamped them. I bet the sentiments that came with the sunflower would look really good and I like that you have the word happy and sunshine in really big um, kind of cursive looking fonts and so I thought I would go ahead and stamp those and then use some of the tinier sentiments to go with it now because you're stamping on watercolor paper that may have warped a bit while you painted it you uh, might have an issue where your stamp skips here and there and to correct that just simply use a fine tip pen and you can fill in anything that skips which is a really handy tip and I use that tip quite a bit so don't feel like you have to throw a card because you didn't get a perfect impression you can just go in and fill in with a pen when you're all done this little tool here this pink tool with the pokey end is from the Dollar Tree and you get two in a package and um, it's really great for creasing paper for poking holes it's uh it's just really handy I think one of the tips might be a little bit finer um, and one tip might be a little bit thicker for doing uh, brad holes but they're really handy to have they're also great for picking the backs off of um, foam tape and things like that if you don't have fingernails even if you do have fingernails it still can be tricky to get those backings off of your adhesive so I decided to use some brass to attach my sentiment and mounted this one to a sheet of yellow cardstock and put it on a purple card base. I save time by cutting bases and panels ahead of time and I just keep them in a cart next to my table. So when I'm ready to make cards, it's really quick and easy once I get the, uh, the focal image out of the way. I thought some white gel pen highlights would really make the uh, image look better and uh, that's what I did there, just a few little hints. The other ones I didn't do the white gel pen on because I thought they had enough going on already so you can use your own judgment and see if your card needs it also the glittery gel pens work really nice for embellishing things like this there's a stardust by jelly roll pen that's just a really fine no color just like a fine sparkle that's so pretty on uh, stamped images so it's something to think about if you're looking to you know level up your stamping game a little bit on this one I offset the uh, cardstock a bit and um, on this final one, I decided not to use foam tape, but to kind of put my layers on a little bit crooked to add to that artsy flair that this card has because of the torn edges. I think it's fun to, uh, to experiment, to try different layouts. Um, it's totally fine to also keep your cards simple like I am here, because that way your focal imaging and your watercoloring can really stand out. And who wouldn't love to get one of these cheerful cards in the mail? I want to thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up before you go, and you can check out the video description for all the supplies I used. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.